Hello and welcome back to East Coast Fibreglass. In today's video we're going to show you how to hopefully avoid the wrinkles in gel coat, which is sometimes referred to as alligatoring or pickling of a gel coat. Firstly, make sure you have a good workshop temperature. Ideally you shouldn't be working below 10 degrees C, and certainly not in freezing temperatures. The ideal temperature to use this material is around 15 to 20 degrees C. If your materials and mould are coming from a cold storage area, then it's important to condition these also, between approximately 15 and 20 degrees C, 24 hours before you plan to use them. When applying gel coat, avoid applying the gel coat thinly, as if it was a household paint. Thin gel coat will easily be attacked by the styrene solvents present in polyester resins. The gel coat should be applied liberally, with more of a laying motion than painting. You're looking for a film thickness that hides the mould, roughly around 0.6mm thick. Coverage at this thickness is approximately 600 grams per square metre. Once liberally coated, it can be neatly tipped off with the brush to tidy the surface ready for laying your fibreglass. Your gel coat should feel tacky to the touch when cured, but when dragging your fingers over the surface there should be no colour on your fingertips. Check the deep areas of the mould too, these areas take longer to cure. This is because the styrene vapours collect at the deepest areas of the mould and can slow the gel coat's curing process. To combat this, simply turn the mould on its side to help the vapours flow out or use a localised extraction system, or simply fan the vapours out of the mould. The gel coat is ready once no colour is present on your fingertips. When you apply the resin and matting to the gel coat, you should also have a good working temperature of the same 15 to 20 degrees C, and also the average dosage of 2% catalyst to your resin. Here, on the right side of our test panel, we're using a polyester resin with only 1% catalyst added, and applied in a very cold working environment, so that the resin will cure very slowly. After approximately one and a half to two hours, this extremely slow curing resin should cause the gel coat to wrinkle, as the styrene solvent inside the product starts to attack the gel coat. Polyester resins and gel coats contain a solvent known as styrene. To demonstrate what styrene does to a gel coat when resin takes too long to cure, or if your gel coat is too soft, we are brushing pure styrene onto this cured gel coat sample. See here how the styrene attacks and lifts the gel coat. Following the lowest points first where the brush lines are, basically where the gel coat is at its thinnest, and also most likely at its softest straight after curing. The same will happen if you're applying a second layer of gel coat which takes too long to cure. If your resin or second gel coat cures within a decent time scale, the styrene will not have a chance to do this to your gel coat. Here, on the left hand side of our sample panel, we're applying resin mixed at a 2% catalyst dosage and at a perfect working temperature of 18 degrees C. The product is also conditioned to the same working temperature, so it should cure within a reasonable time scale. It's also worth mentioning that catalysts should be thoroughly mixed into both your gel coat and resin. Poor catalyst dispersion can also cause some areas to cure slower than the rest of the laminate. As you can see, our cold, slow curing resin has attacked our gel coat as expected, whereas the sample that cured within reasonable temperatures and at a much quicker rate has come out perfect. So let's recap on what you should do to avoid this issue with gel coating. 1. Ensure a good working temperature and condition the mould and products to 15 to 20 degrees C. Definitely avoid laminating in colder temperatures when GRP moulding. 2. Ensure a good thickness of gel coat and avoid applying it too thinly. 
three, make sure the gel coat has fully cured before laminating. And four, ensure you have sufficient catalyst added to your resin. A slow curing resin will most likely attack your gel coat. And ensure all products are mixed thoroughly after adding the catalyst. We hope that following this guidance will help you eliminate any issues you may be having with wrinkling or alligatoring of the gel coat, or hopefully prevent you ever experiencing this issue. Thanks for watching. As usual, all materials shown can be purchased on our website at ecfiberglasssupplies.co.uk or just search for East Coast Fiberglass.